Install the rollers as shown. The machine base has wheels under it. Move it to the location you want to install the machine at. The front side of the machine will have screws. Load cell wire will come out from right side. Load cell allen bolts on left side. Keep 2 feet gap on all sides. After installation, you can push it closer to the wall, if required. This is the right side pillar. It has a hole and a nylon rope. Do not remove this rope. Fix the right pillar like this, using the four small bolts provided. Tighten the bolts with medium strength. Verify that the pillar is straight, by measuring top distance from the plate edge, at front and back. Now tighten the four bolts firmly. Now fix the left pillar in the same way. You will notice that the left pillar has no hole on the side and no nylon rope attached to it. Fix the cross beam, horizontally connecting the two side pillars, a show. Do not full tighten it right now. You will use the four medium length bolts for this. Now fix the pneumatic cylinder on the cross beam, as shown. Make sure that the input, output ports of the cylinder, are at the back side of the machine. To fix the cylinder, 
you will use the four long bolts provided with the machine. Tighten the bolts firmly. Make sure the cylinder is straight. Tighten the bolts firmly. Make sure all bolts of the machine are now firmly tightened. Unpack the load cell wire. Fix the air filter regulator to the machine, as shown. Unpack the nylon wire at the bottom, and tie a knot around the load cell connector. Unpack the nylon rope at the top. Slowly start pulling the nylon rope, allowing the load cell cable to travel through the vertical pillar, and come out from the top. Remove nylon rope from the load cell cable. Place a waste paper or corrugated board on the platform. Place a strong wooden or corrugated box, and another paper or corrugated sheet on top. Now place the top compression plate on this box. 
insert the plate from the back of the machine, such that the roller are almost touching the back of the vertical pillars. Adjust the platen such that the universal joint is exactly in the center. Now pull the piston shaft down. Insert a long screwdriver in the hole of the piston shaft. Rotate anti-clockwise for about two or three turns, so that the threads align. Now rotate clockwise, till the piston shaft threads are locked properly, in the universal joint threads. You may want to use a thread sealant such as Loctite to keep the joint stronger. Attach the quick exhaust valve and flow control valve, to the top port of the cylinder, as shown. Attach the solenoid valve to the bottom port of the cylinder, as shown. Connect the small length blue tube, between the flow control valve input and solenoid valve output. Connect the medium length blue tube, between the solenoid valve input and the filter regulator output. Use the long length blue tube, to connect compressed air supply, to the input of the filter regulator. The platen will now lift up, and you can now remove the box from underneath it. There are two screws under the digital indicator, and matching holes on the cross beam. Fix the indicator onto the cross beam, as shown. Hand tightening is sufficient. Plug the solenoid valve supply. Load cell cable. RS-232 data cable. And power supply cable. Switch on the machine. Large cartons can be tested directly. For smaller cartons, you can use the optional dummy table, provided with the machine. Place the carton on the platform or table, as centered as possible. Use the lines on the platform as guides for centering.
press 0, then press start. The top platform will come down and start pressing the carton. You will see the display showing the load increasing. The load should increase between 5 to 10 kilograms per second. Speed can be adjusted from the flow control valve, at the back of the cylinder. As soon as the box collapses, the machine will detect the failure, and reverse automatically. The first line will go back to zero. The second line, shows the peak reading, which is the result of this test. Remove the box, and inspect it, for location and type of failure.